Welcome to leg 35 of the Great Loop Aboard the Perch. I'm Kim Russo, the director of America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. And today we are continuing east on the Erie Canal. We'll be going from Amsterdam, New York, where we were tied up for the night at a free wall just above Lock 11. And we're continuing on today to Little Falls. So it was a beautiful, serene morning when we woke up. If you've been watching these videos, you know that the wind has really been the story all through our Great Loop. This was obviously a very quiet morning, but the wind was predicted to pick up as the day went on. So we're no longer worried about waves, but we are, of course, worried about dockage and particularly locking through when it's windy. They can be very windy within the lock walls, and the wind can move in some unexpected directions once it swirls down there inside the lock. So we approached our first lock while it was still very calm. We entered as usual, hailing the lockmaster on the VHF for a request to lock through, waiting for the green light, and then entering the lock and getting situated on the wall. I'm going to stop the video right here for a minute because I do want to show this because we get lots of questions about this. This is this particular lock has both pipes and weighted lines, and you can see them both there in that picture. We find the pipes to be much easier. And the way you work with that is you take your line from the boat, you wrap it around the pipe, and you run the line back to the boat. And then you hold that line. You don't want to cleat off, as I said in a previous video. If you cleat that off, you run the risk of uh, the, the line getting caught up and you not having the ability to correct that. And as the line gets more taut, you won't be able to uncleat it. The only option at that point will be a knife. So. I had heard that many times. I was always very worried about cleating it off. You'd never want to fully cleat it off. But as you can see in the picture, I have run it back to the cleat and you can take one turn around the cleat. And a lock master actually told me that in one of my very first locks. He, as I was holding onto the line and struggling with it a little bit, he said, let the cleat do the work for you. Put it right around there. And I've used that technique ever since. It was great advice. It works very well. Um, you know, it uses the, the principles of physics, I suppose, to make it much easier to lock through. The weighted lines are a little bit more challenging, but you can also, as you're moving up, you can see that line's a little bit short there. You can see it right to the right of the pipe, but you can pull that aboard. You can uh, wrap that on a cleat one turn without actually cleating off. So that's a little bit more about how you do that. And then you want to tend the line. We've got it around the pipe, and in this particular video, we are locking upward, so the lock is going to fill with water, and as the boat floats higher, you just want to tend that line and make sure that it's continuing to move up the pipe. So the lock masters increase the water in the lock, the boat floats higher, and you have change elevations. Once the doors are open, you can drop that line, and you'll be able to continue on your way down the river. So that's a little bit more about how the locks work. If it is a cable instead of a pipe, it actually works very much the same. And the we'll try and show you a little bit more about the weighted lines as we continue to lock through some of these many locks on the Erie Canal. But that is just a beautiful picturesque farm that we passed that was there on the banks of the Mohawk River as we worked our way towards Little Falls. And it was really just a, a day of, of locks, not quite as many as the previous day. I think we're going through a total of six today, if I'm not mistaken. We'll start with lock 12 was the first, and we'll go all the way through lock 17 to reach Little Falls. A couple more points about the locks. Make sure that you're wearing gloves. The lines, particularly if you're taking their lines on, on those weighted lines, can be slimy and really quite disgusting, as can the lock walls, and sometimes you'll be pushing off of those walls just a little bit. So definitely keep that in mind. Of course, you're also going to want to have your all of your fenders ready. But as we continue down, uh, the wind started to pick up a little bit. You can see some ripples on the waterway there as we continued with locking through on the Erie Canal. So another point about the locks, there's obviously many. Um, but if you want to be prepared for whether they are pipes or cables or weighted lines or something else, Check waterway guide or in your navigation software, there's usually a little write, written description of the locks, and that will give you the details on what kind of uh, paraphernalia is inside that lock to help you uh, stay tied up against the wall. We came across a deer 
standing on the side of the river just kind of checking us out as we went by, so that was pretty cool. And then this next lock has weighted lines only. So as I said before, kind of not our favorite. You can see them hanging there, the white line. It's got a weight at the end to keep it you know, down towards the bottom of the lock. You can see um, the sill there and you can see the slime on the wall. And that is the weighted line that at this point I have grabbed, I have brought back to our boat and I have wrapped it around the cleat. So I have that little advantage of holding the line. You can see I'm wearing gloves, very important in those types of locks. So that's just another example of what kind of tie up you might find on the lock. Shortly after that lock, we came across a really shallow spot. It was less than seven feet in some places. And for most of the day, we had seen nothing less than 16. There was a dredge there, so it looks like they're taking care of that problem. But just be a little bit aware of that. And shortly thereafter, you will approach Little Falls. The entrance to this lock is a little bit different. And you can see there the wall slides up instead of opening um, as two gates. This is also known as a guillotine or guillotine lock, depending on your French pronunciation. And there you can see it's weighted lines once again. So you cruise in slowly, you pick up the line with a boat hook, you bring it back to the boat, one turn around a cleat, and that should do it for what you need to do to lock through. You'll just hold that and, and make sure that the, you're smoothly moving up as the water is filling the lock. So once we finish that lock, as you saw from the water tower there, we are approaching Little Falls. Little Falls has a harbor where you can tie up. It's really just a um, town wall, but it is an amazing stop. They charge a dollar a foot, so that's pretty much a bargain. The wall is right at a park, and from there, it's probably a 10 or 15 minute walk into town over a bridge. That's a picture I took from the bridge as I was crossing over. But the uh, the people who run the marina are so willing to help. They are willing to drive you into town and give you a tour of their beautiful town. Um, they pointed out what restaurants you could walk to and that the restaurants were known for driving you back to the wall if you didn't want to walk back after a late dinner. So just really a delightful town. We don't do our Great Loop lifestyle videos when we're just staying one night because there just isn't enough time, but I couldn't resist sharing a few pictures from Little Falls because everything is just stunning. That is their city hall. That is just a, a, kind of a random house, but pretty interesting and spectacular. And that is their public library. So one of the classiest libraries I've seen. Um, that's the post office. So each and every town building just seems to have this uh, beauty to it. That is the main street running through town with lots of shops and restaurants on it. There is a beautiful park with a veterans memorial there. And that is just another one of the homes in town. But it was really a lovely stop. Some of the loopers who took a walk and ventured in a different direction than I found um, lots of Victorian homes. Many have been renovated and restored. Some are in need of a little bit of love. But it was really kind of a neat stop, and it was one of the places that I wished we had a little bit longer to spend. As usual, I am sharing our Nebo log for the day. Nine voyages again because of so many locks. Five and a half hours underway, when a distance of 35 nautical miles. Our average speed was 6.4 knots, and we maxed out at 10.1 knots. Here's our overall track for the full day. As you can see, continuing to move eastward on the Erie Canal. Our next cruising day will take us from Little Falls to Sylvan Beach, which is on the eastern edge of Oneida Lake. We'll be back soon with that video. Thanks for watching.